Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Fan Fiction Review, and today we are reviewing For the Republic by Wanderer101, a Civilization series and Mass Effect crossover story. This, this is a particular story. It's not one for balance, and it's definitely not one, it's a, definitely a story little bit different than what I usually read, but I still find it quite nice. Now, for the story itself, it follows more specifically the Wanderer, who is a immortal entity. I'm not stuttering or mispronouncing anything, and I am correct. This is the immortal entity who watches over a little tribe until it grows into the country whose basically representative is the United States of America, although they are better and they have an immortal god, mortal entity watching, guiding them. Every other power, human power, also essentially has a immortal entity wa guiding them. They ta he takes the literal aspect of how of the of that and makes it literal. I cannot stress how he even thought that would wo how that would work. But he made it work. Wanderer. Why? How did you come up with this? <laughs> Just... Why? <laughs> oh my god. It still works though. I believe... Uh, I don't remember what happened there in that time. But I do not know. Oh well. But he does take stuff and... Well, it's difficult to explain, so I'm just going to ignore that part and just go on and talk about the story itself. The story does collect, catalog the various factions as they rise, they explore, they expand, each one being different and having their own unique taste, each being unique. I particularly like the Romans. I'm pretty sure that's a faction. I don't remember. But I do like the Romans if they're there. I like Rome. I like the Spartans. They're not there, I'm sad. But then again, it talks about also how their contact, which I believe it was a lesser one that was attacked, and then the Republic came in and just kicked ass. They just kicked her in ass, and now they're doing, taking the game aspects of the Civilization series. I'm not sure if he's using anything from the too soon, like one or two, or number six, because that's what was published made before number s Civilization 6 was out. And now he's just more or less taking it and implying it to Mass Effect such as cultural and seemingly just taking over even ways that the freaking before have never been done. It is a very, very strange game. I mean, not game, story. But it's decently popular, so it's not a bad one. I assure you, it's not a bad one. It's definitely one you should pick up if you if, if you like the Civilization series at all in any way. It really exemplify. Damn, I cannot pronounce. Exemplify, I think, is the word I'm thinking of. Anyways, there he really does make note of even the smaller things that people tend to forget of, such as uh, using people's cult, the great people's cultural thing or religion to annex other um, uh, other places. And I believe he went on record to state that he will be doing that specifically on the Asari world of I can't. It's not off the top of my head. It's on the top of my head, but I can't remember, pronounce figure out what his name is, like that Ilium world, and basically he's going to annex that, while well, the Republic is, but so many different factions, just, I don't understand, this is definitely going to be a short little episode thing, just bring it note, but it's a definitely a good one to pick up, the, he's only really done the first contact in like the, like se chapter 7 and chapter 8 are like point of views within a few years after it and are showcasing what each side thinks of each other. I do I just like how he does this. It It's a very good way. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it does amplify, exemplify. I'm using words I 
repeatedly that I don't know. He does make note of how each faction is different, and I, it's quite, it's quite good. Although the immortal entity thing, I question how that immort that ent the uh, immortality actually works. More so for me, more than story wise, because what if their like entire civilization was destroyed? Would they still exist? Would they still be immortal and would they just restart it or something? Although he does make note of it, I think the 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 they like the wanderer or anyone else who's like the immortal cannot have kids of their own, or can they? I don't know. I think they can't have kids. That's a good thing to add because if they could have kids, they can just make everyone immortal and then who would stop them? Entire civilization of immortal warriors would just fuck everything over. Uh, I think I'm going to sign out here, though. This is, once again, For the Republic by Wanderer101. Given how many favorites and followers it is, you are likely already know what this story is. But I'll still make it. I should probably put a link into the first chapter in my stories. For, yeah, down in the description below, I should probably put a link to it. And j rated T, I just noticed this, rated T for just in case. Isn't that for, like, higher ratings instead of T? My god, what the heck.